very active season. In fact, they're saying 17 to 25 named storms. The average is 14. This range is the highest that they've ever forecasted the storms for that particular season. They've never said there could be upwards of 25 storms. So yeah, they're thinking that it's going to be busy. Of those 17 to 25, they think 18 to 13 of those will grow to hurricanes. And of those, four to seven could be major hurricanes, which is a category three hurricane or higher. So that's that's pretty impressive right there. And the ACE index, the amount of energy is expected to be very high as well too. In fact, the second highest forecast for ACE or add up all of the energy of all the storms over the upcoming season and you get a total, they're thinking it'd probably be their second highest total that they've seen. At least that's their forecast for this upcoming season. Now, why is this? And it's basically the same exact reasons that we've seen all the other forecasts. Colorado State, AccuWeather, all those places issuing are saying that it's because the record warm water temperatures. It's not just warm water, it's record warm water across the Atlantic Basin. Now, La Nina is also developing. That gives us less wind shear. I'll explain that. And an active African monsoon. Those are those waves that come off of Africa. The more of those waves that come off, the more seedlings you will if you want to make hurricanes, right? And that gives it kind of like a nucleus to start with. So here's the water temperature. These are actual numbers in Fahrenheit. Anything 80 and above, which is basically this line right in here, is where you can make tropical systems. And this will just warm up. But if you look at the temperature anomaly, and that's the difference from average. So how much warmer, which is what this is, or cooler is the water than what it should be for this time of the year. And most of the Atlantic and the main development region, which is this area right in here, that's about two and a half to four and a half degrees above average. The water temperatures out there right now are more typical for late August, which is actually the core of the season. So we really got to keep a close eye on it. The Caribbean's warm. The Gulf is warm, especially the Eastern Gulf. But this area in here is where we watch for storms to develop early in the season, this time of the year, May, late May, but especially June. And they come up at us. So something for us to watch there. Now, what does La Nina do? La Nina actually shifts the jet stream up to the north. And what that is, it's water off of South America. That's been warmer than average for a while. That's El Nino. But in the last month or two, actually, that water down here is really cooled off. And when that really gets going, it changes the relationship between the surface of the ocean and the atmosphere, and that shifts high pressures and low pressures all around the globe. In our neck of the woods, it pushes this jet stream further off to the north. And so what that does, it takes all the wind shear, not all of it, but a lot of it with it. And so then this area here, where the storms try and develop, has less wind shear. That's during La Nina's. We're going into a La Nina. It looks like it will peak, actually, at the peak of the hurricane season, August, September, October. So warm water plus less wind shear means if you if warm water is easy to get things started. Less wind shear means you're probably not going to break it down very much either with wind shear. Now, the seasonal probability is basically an 85% chance that we have an above normal season. Uh, obvious with those numbers, right? Now, remember, it only takes one storm I mean, these are high numbers, right? And if you're really worried about it, it can definitely be worrisome. But 1992, we only had seven named storms. The first one was in August, but that was Hurricane Andrew that devastated South Florida that went into Louisiana. So high number forecast, low number forecast. All it means is we just need to be ready for any storm this upcoming season. And that looks like what everybody's been doing lately. I've been talking to a lot of you and I, I think a lot of you have been doing pretty good. So especially since we saw Ian and people are starting to realize that we got to get ready. Now, having said all of that, we do actually have a wave that we're watching, but this is coming out through the Turks and Caicos, the Southern Bahamas, and you can see it's actually going to go mainly south of Bermuda. It's only a 10% chance for development. I'm not worried about it. Bermuda shouldn't be worried about it. It's actually just some rain. They could use a little bit of rain but development does not look very likely. This is the forecast model. You can barely even see it on the model. That little lump right there, that's it. There's Bermuda, by the way. That's tomorrow evening. And then by Saturday morning, it's basically east of there and moving out. And look, it doesn't even develop. This area in here is where we'd be watching for this time of the year. And I'm going to run this all the way out to June 2nd. You don't really see much going on right here through that particular time period. So that's good news. But certainly as we get back in through the middle of June, we'll start looking for 
more development. There's the season starts officially June 1st. Statistical peak is September 10th. We've got a long way to go. In fact, once you get into late July and August, then things really start to ramp up. My kind of rule of thumb is if we can make it through Halloween, we're doing pretty good after that. But the season does run all the way through the end of November. So something to keep an eye on there. All right, guys, don't forget to head over to our website and don't forget our YouTube page. We've got a tremendous amount of information. Just search 10 Tampa Bay on YouTube and you'll see hurricane hacks. They're short one, two minute videos that help you and your family get prepared for the upcoming season.